All right, thank you for staying with Daybreak. We're getting into the final part of this conversation. And now the question we ask is, what is the future of journalism? We're going to take it through our panelists in a zigzag form. So we'll start with you, Eric. Okay. Yeah. So I think the future of journalism is more towards, uh, at least for mainstream, it's to give context to stories. Yeah. Because the job of breaking stories is like completely gone. So if you're competing with people on, on social media to break stories, then it's, uh, you find yourself tripping. And that's where we see a lot of fake stories coming in because there's no time taken to verify and check if things are accurate. And then I'd like to respond to, to something about regulation. The problem that we have in Kenya is that the government regulates to punish instead of regulating to provide guidance. And that's why we see that a lot of times the way the law comes in into you, you the media You get that space. in what? In the way they communicate as they give out the regulation? You yes. feel it's more... It's more to punish. It's more to punish. Yeah, because I think we have a fantastic example on regulating to provide guidance with the Open Data Initiative where the government basically committed to publishing the data it collects. And uh, that's one of the reasons why we have, uh, so we're, we're able to look into budgets and public finance so we do a PESA check because all this information is either freely available or readily accessible. But now if we have uh, calls to get people or, or, or to take content down because it offends certain individuals and uh, because a lot of people making these regulations do not have like a stake in the game or they don't understand how these spaces work. So for example, calling for someone to take down their content because it violates a certain obscure rule in the penal code or something like that, it doesn't make sense to me who is consuming content on the regular because it's like the government doesn't trust me to make my own personal judgment. So I feel like the, the role of the media is to add context to things and because us as like a small organization, we don't have access to the sort of people like we can't, for example, get Ezekiel to come and basically give his opinions on misinformation. But you guys have access to these individuals. So it's your job to make sense of the big massive stories that touch on everything and everyone yeah. for your audience. So I can come to you for guidance. Yeah. I can go on Twitter for the breaking stories and I'm able, I'm able to find like a, a nice balance. All right. All right. Foy, a minute. Okay. Uh, well, I think traditional media isn't going anywhere because as much as people who maybe live in the town areas have access to Wi-Fi and MBs, that's not the case everywhere. You know, but the two can work together. When it comes to digital platforms, I think that when it comes to regulation, we need to involve the young people into in that because you find that um, it's the older generation who are sort of like the gatekeepers. Yeah. You know, but things have changed. People's moral compasses have shifted. People are more sexually liberated. People are thinking about different things politically. So we need to involve such people in the in those conversations so that we can enable regulation to be effective. Yeah. Otherwise. It won't. Oh, Mike? <laughs> the question being, what is the future of journalism? Of journalism only. And even, me even, media. even, even media. 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 <laughs> media. Basically, yeah. <laughs> now that we were looking at definitions yeah, and yes. making sure. <clears throat> My eight-year-old daughter asked me, no, actually she told me, I want to open a YouTube channel now, at age eight, YouTube channel, if you ask me, is like having your own TV station. If that is happening, then the future of media journalism is going to go down to the individual putting their content, if we're not already doing a lot of that, and much more about pulling the information you want in terms of digital. I agree with uh, Eric about context uh, in the traditional media. So what do I see? I see a very big headache as we've already experienced in the US, for example, trying to regulate Facebook. Yeah. And that's going to continue in its own, to its own degree here yeah. as a country. But it's a wave. And I think the best thing to do with a wave is know how to ride it as opposed to try and stand and stop it. Yeah. So where regulation is concerned, if we can find how we guide, guide yeah. as how we guide digital content, yeah. um, so much the better. But the responsibility really is to start educating, you know, my daughter and her colleagues in how to be responsible in what they choose to pull, 
yeah. and what they choose to load. Okay. And then that will progress. All right. Yeah. Glory, one minute. I agree with all of them. I think the two major points to note is the regulation, but giving reasons behind it, and also involving the youth. Because um, I feel like lately, more kids are even wanting to watch the, the songs and some movies that have been banned, because Forbidden Fruit, we all know, is the sweetest. So I believe we should educate them and let them know why they shouldn't watch it, as opposed to just saying no. No, that's not what you're supposed to be doing, and it's not going to happen on my watch. So regulation, education, and um, having the youth being involved in these okay. setups. Yes. Dr. Buka? Uh, for me, the future is two-pronged. One, it's uh, who's, who's at the center of it, and who's at the center of it. The, whatever is at the center is the audience. And two-pronged in the sense that, you know, the first uh, approach would be to go where the audience is. And that audience today is on social media. Uh, so, you know, if, if, if I'm in the traditional space or in the legacy media, is how do I leverage on social media platforms to be able to reach that audience? And it's interesting that, you know, today even leading news um, networks are on Instagram sharing news where traditionally Instagram was just seen as a, a platform to share pictures. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's what I mean by going to where the audience is mm -hmm. and finding them, you know, because you want to be in that space. But the other the other uh, route is that you know the future of journalism must also bring audiences to us as as media. And how do we do that? We do that by the quality of stories that we are telling. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're good at storytelling, if we invest in quality stories, in depth, in context, in history, in giving different dimension to, uh, dimensions to stories, then we're going to bring audiences to us. That's why, you know, you find when there's a big, a big story, an investigative piece coming up, even on NTV or on Citizen TV or wherever, and it's advertised ahead of time, promoted, people will be watching. The traffic at that time, even just on Twitter and all that usually is huge. Yeah. Exactly. You know, so, so that's how, you know, uh, uh, for you to be able to bring the audience to you mm -hmm. would call for a lot more investment in the quality of stories that we are telling. Thank you. Okay. Two-pronged approach is how she puts it. Swale, seven, uh, someone here saying traditional media is here to stay. 7 p.m. news uh, is safe. I think, uh, yes. Uh, in the future? <laughs> <laughs> as much as uh, guys might think that I'm pro-traditional media, <laughs> uh, of course, it's here to stay. Even Koi confirmed that you know it's not going anywhere. <laughs> and uh, but the future, of course, is uh, uh, digital uh, media, and uh, that's what prompted me to write this book. Actually, I was, I was waiting for you to talk about what <laughs> oh, you've been yeah. holding yes. in your hand yes. for, the, yes. for the better part I of the show. Prompted me to write this book, which uh, covers all aspects of journalism, not only about the TV news uh, reading only, as it's uh, the title says, and. Um, the way I said before, that uh, even if you Just pretend, hold the to, be, even if you pretend to be a digital journalist, yeah. but you need to know a few things about traditional media for you to move on. Things like rules and those regulations, code of uh, standards and stuff, without you knowing them, uh, you, you can't be a good journalist. Thank you, Swale, for that. I hope we have a digital version of your book and a podcast. Uh, that, that, that is going yeah. on soon. It's going on, okay. <laughs> yes, <laughs> going on soon. <laughs> Dr. Mutua, wrap this up for us. Before the challenge was scarcity of information yeah. mm -hmm. with the new technologies and the internet, now it's multiplicity and too much information. <laughs> so the future for me lies in credibility of the information that we are getting. Because like I said, when the excitement is over, when people have gone over the internet and watched everything they want to watch, post uh, everything they want to post, yeah. ultimately, you still want to have some sense of responsibility. Because like I said, it's about people. It's about us as a society. And what kind of uh, community do we want to have? What kind of children do we want to bring mm -hmm. up? Do we want to expose our children to pornography just because we are excited about technology? How far do we go? in expressing ourselves so that ultimately we are still uh, we still want decent societies we still are, want to have responsible podcasting responsible vlogging want these platforms to become not platforms for destroying humanity mm -hmm. destroying our children but platforms that are educative i like what Carol, caroline motoko is doing you know very educative intelligent uh, channels where you can see there is sense of research, there is a responsibility, and she's not just pontificating, she's bringing in people 
with expertise in various forms on issues that interest people. And it's not just about politics. Mm -hmm. I think the traditional media has for far too long been obsessed with politics. I agree with Swale, it's not going anywhere. I think we are so conservative that even after I've read all this and Dr. Buka says she had read about uh, the new Safaricom CEO, but I still want to hold the paper that I can sort of uh, fly with, uh, you know, the hard copy in the morning. <laughs> I, I don't know why, but we are that kind of people. Tell, tell but, me this, and uh, sorry for interrupting, in 30 seconds, concerns by members here that whereas they feel you should be guiding digital media, that you're trying to censure, and by you I mean government, and that Absolutely. sort of thing. How do you respond Absolutely. to that as, as we wrap up? We, we, we keep engaging, and I, and I feel those concerns. That's good feedback. You feel those concerns? That's good feedback. Okay. Remember, we are still, uh, we are still uh, appreciating the entire, uh, the, the dynamics about new technologies okay. and the internet. Research and, uh, and, and, and the, the conversations around regulation need to go on. It cannot be a one-off uh, discussion. And I think even uh, people who are involved in that space need to give us the feedback as government so that we can become better in policy formulation. Thank you. And it is nice to see that government is now more focused on research so that policy is informed by research. But allow me to say in, that in, in 10 seconds media now. literacy is critical engagement with the people yeah. the bigger populations particularly the youth who are using uh the online platforms is very important for yeah. them to become responsible and to use internet for the right things not to destroy themselves but to be able to use it for information networking and to do, use it to do business Thank instead you. of wasting time insulting each other okay so instead of wasting time <laughs> insulting each other that's the parting shot but a lot of thoughts from an excellent panel. Thank you, each of you, for joining us today. We've had Foy Wamboy, who's a digital journalist, uh, but also a journalist, actually, who plays in the Instagram and Facebook space as well. Uh, Glory Nyarwai, who plays uh, a lot on Twitter and also as a social media influencer. Swalem Doe, who has uh, really held on to his book, uh, even as he talks to us here today. Senior news anchor and a news editor as well. Eric Mugendi, managing editor. Pesa Check and a Code for Africa. Uh, Michael Oyer, who today we have discovered what he studied in school. Uh, but we know him as a media, a media practitioner. practitioner. Thank you for joining us, uh, Dr. Nancy Booker uh, with the Aga Khan University. Thank you for joining us as well. And last but not least, Dr. Ezekiel Mutua, uh, the CEO of the Kenya Film and Classification Board. That was a mouthful. Yep. Wow. <laughs> That's why I let you handle it. You, you now wrap up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what you're saying on social media. There's a lot of feedback coming through. Let's start with 22422, which is the SMS line. Kindly tell us your name and where you're texting from, but you don't leave a name. You say, can Ezekiel Mutua come to our rescue and control the inappropriate music that is played in Matatus? Sometimes you're embarrassed when obscene pictures are shown in Matatu screens and the conductors are too rude to change. Sarikar, watch out. We are, we, are, we are working with the police to ensure yeah. that uh, Matatos do, do not become broadcasting stations. Thank okay. you. I thought they would have to get a license. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Okay, Susan says, as you discuss old and new media, please note that nowadays news has become very scary to watch. It's focusing on horrible stories. Yeah. All right. Thank you for that. You also don't leave a name, but you say, I second the conversation by requesting the ancient media people. Is that you and I, Wahiga? <laughs> no, the others. We, he's very, he's very, they've gone to specifics. Uh, they've gone ancient. They, they, ancient someone... the new... <laughs> they want us to coach the upcoming journalist. Swale, I salute you. So Shout wh out to why Bab. is Swale but, uh, alone uh, in that? Right after the word ancient. ancient. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk about that with Swale later on. Um, Twitter, this is what you're saying. Remember, the hashtag is uh, daybreak. Mwao Alphonse says, any content consumed by children online or on broadcast media must be regulated. It's a, the collective responsibility for everyone in society to ensure dirty content does not get in the hands of our children. All right. Nancy Marangu says, digital media has enhanced social connectivity and information sharing. Street. Short and to the point, uh, yeah. Josfat Maida says, social media is full of different professions. They want to be journalists. They express themselves. They are there to clear their minds and also laugh. The issue of education on social media is just for school children. Hmm? All right. I don't know if I fully get that. But Remy, are... Remy says, regulating social media won't be the solution to the immorality or is immortality in the society. I think it's immorality. I think you meant immorality. You meant the youth for that. Remember when mainstream media was shut down recently? Okay, I think we have one or two more. Kitoni yeah. one says, we have to first look at how we get to where we are. It's, total, it's because of a lack of social ethics. When we allow nudity in the name of socialites, we are failing as a nation. We can't just regulate without correcting the social immorality. Parents, talk to your kids. 
Okay, All referring right. to something that Dr. Mutua raised here. Yeah, Nancy again says the internet provides educational materials and computerized games that can impart children with knowledge and critical thinking skills. Okay, uh, Harin Zhao says, I think the digital media should package news that can be accepted or believed. That's why we see news on Twitter or Facebook, but we wait for news on citizen television. Thank you for that. For us to kind of believe, for, for us, kind of believe that traditional media is slow. That's the only issue. Okay. So they're calling us uh, slow, Trevor. Yeah, ancient slow. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob. <laughs> Jacob says either traditional or digital has ups and downs, and they are here to stay. We may regulate them, but at the end, and good content ends up to consumers. Only we cultivate pra pra Patri patriotic acts in ourselves. All right. And that does it. Ancient oh, one. Yeah. Can we take that, can we take that break now? Let the ancient one take the <laughs> fellow, break. Fellow, my fellow ancient brother here and I take that break now to our panelists once again. Thank you. <laughs> Kimani Mbogwa, hopefully a younger demographic yeah, will listen Kimani to him. Yeah, is much younger. Web Wars, they're analyzing what's happening online. Who would have thought we'd have shows like that? Yep. Web Wars, what Ezekiel Mutu was talking about. People what? insulting each other. Kimani Social puts that media. into perspective with yep. his panelists <laughs> on the other side of this break. We'll be right back.